Let's talk about some free agent running backs. The biggest domino to fall in the free agent market was that of Saquon Barkley going to the rival Philadelphia Eagles, signing a three-year $37.75 million deal that could be worth up to $46.75 million. Now, Barkley gets $26 million fully guaranteed at signing, which makes it the second best running back contract if you're looking at fully guaranteed beyond just Christian McCaffrey. He's the only one who has more at fully at, that was fully guaranteed at signing. So it's a really good deal for Barkley, who, let's remember, is still only 27 years old. Frustrating offseason last year. He wanted to get a long-term deal done. He's probably looking to be getting a long-term deal done for a while now, but he had to play in the franchise tag. They adjusted the tag a little bit, gave him a little bit more money at signing, but still, he was playing under their franchise tag, so we knew that this was going to be a little bit up in the air. So for Philly situation specifically, it's great for Barkley, who has been really chasing the production and efficiency uh, that he had in 2018 in that rookie season, uh, basically ever since. You know, he had the injury, and now he's kind of back from it, and he's had two years where he's been relatively healthy, and he's played a good amount of games, but still just that efficiency for him. He said the volume stats, especially in 2022, when the Giants had a really, really good season, but the efficiency number still it was not like it was his rookie year and so he still in a lot of ways been chasing that as a rusher and a receiver we goes from the giants which their situation is not great i mean they've been bottom half of the nfl when it comes to run blocking grades basically over the last three years to philadelphia which is one of the best situations in the nfl even with jason kelsey retiring this is a unit that was both top three in the nfl over the last two seasons in total run blocking grade so it's just a better situation overall for him there Philly has produced two different 1,000-yard backs in Miles Sanders and then DeAndre Swift over the last two seasons as well. So it's fair to say that, hey, new guy in there, especially a guy as talented as Saquon Barkley, if he's fully healthy, you're expecting another 1,000-yard season for him. So when you look at the last two years, not only are the run-blocking grades good, but the individual performances as well. You've got yards per carry averages well above four for both Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift over the last couple of seasons. That's certainly what they're hoping for with Saquon Barkley. But you know, beyond just on the ground performance i think what philadelphia is really trying to get back to with barkley is that receiving ability that was something that was highly touted of him coming out of college and he was picked as high as he was just not because he was a running back but also because he was an elite weapon in the passing game as well they saw him as an overall offensive weapon and it just hasn't been the case over the last handful of years really that rookie season was fantastic for him he had a uh, 83 receiving grade in that season but he hasn't been anything close since hasn't any had a, a receiving grade above 70 for a single season since then so the philadelphia eagles are certainly going to try to get more of that as well you know, they'll, they'll get their usage with him on the ground but i think what they're going to do in the receiving game and we've seen them ramp that up right in 2022 i don't think there was a single back on that team who had more than 30 receptions Last year, there were two different players in Kenneth Gainwell and DeAndre Swift who had more than 30 receptions. So they've been ramping that up in their offense. They hope that Saquon Barkley is the perfect talent marriage of what they can do on the ground and how he can affect the passing game as well. On the flip side of things for the Giants, they're just not in a spot to pay a running back a lot of money. They're just not. I mean, they had the great season uh, the year before where Brian Dable wins coach of the year. They make it to the playoffs and it kind of, we wondered if they kind of jumped the shark a little bit with how that team was rebuilding. And, and they were kind of in an awkward time because they signed Daniel Jones. And so really, is it a rebuild if you got that quarterback? Well, unfortunately, they're realizing that the rest of their roster just was not up to par. So now they have quarterback questions once again, even with Jones under contract. They weren't in a situation where they were going to be able to give Barkley a legitimate long-term deal. I mean, they could have tagged him again, but I, I don't think that would have been the right option for them either. So you hate to see him go to a rival, but it just it, his time was up in New York. Um, they're, they're not in that place to be able to sign him to a long-term deal. Philly is a team that really started last year hot, but even with their great record, things just didn't seem right, and they really fell off as the season went on and during their postseason loss against the Buccaneers. So they're hoping that Barkley infuses some new life, some new excitement into that team, and they're able to bounce back with him in the backfield.